Hello everyone, I am here to discuss the topic on virtual lands. Before we need to study what is a VLAN, let us first understand the concept of a normal land. As we all know it, LAN is the abbreviation for local area network. A local area network is a computer network that interconnects computers within a limited area such as a residence, school, laboratory, university, campus or office building. By contrast, a wide area network not only covers a larger geographic distance but also generally involves least com telecommunication circuits. So, why are we using a VLANs? What is the main reason or for what purpose? The basic reason for splitting a network into VLANs or in simple terms why do we use VLANs is to reduce the congestion on a large local area network. To understand this problem we need to look briefly at how lands have developed over the years. Initially lands were very flat. All the world stations were connected to a single piece of coaxial cable or to a set of chained hubs. However, these disadvantages have been removed since the introduction of VLANs. Now, let us try to understand what is a virtual VLAN. A virtual LAN or a lo virtual local area network is a logical sub-network that can group together a collection of devices from different physical LANs. Larger business networks often set up VLANs to repartition the network for improved traffic management. Several different kinds of physical networks support virtual LANs. These include both Ethernet and Wi-Fi. So in this slide, as you can see, we can see as you can see, it's uh, there's a build, it it talks about VLAN router. So as we know, a virtual local area networks offers a method of dividing one physical network into multiple broadcast domains. However, VLAN enable sw switches cannot by themselves forward traffic across VLAN boundaries. For inter-VLAN communication, a layer 3 router is required. As shown in the figure below, the addition of a router makes it possible to send traffic between VLANs while still containing broadcast traffic within VLAN boundaries. The router uses IP subnets to move traffic between VLANs. Each VLAN has a different IP subnet and there is one-to-one -one correspondence of VLAN and IP subnet boundaries. If a host is in a given IP subnet, it is also in a given VLAN and vice versa. If host A needs to communicate with host D, for example, it first sends an address resolution protocol ARP frame with host D's destination IP address and the broadcast MAC address. The switch then forwards this broadcast to all the other ports in VLAN 10, including the one attached to the router. The router recognizing that it can reach host D's network will send an ARP response frame with its own MAC address as the destination MAC address host A should use. For all subsequent traffic, host A will send frames with host D's IP address but the router's MAC address. The router, knowing that the destination network is on VLAN 20, will route the frame to the switch with a VLAN ID of 20. This switch, in turn, will deliver the frame to host D. The true benefits of VLAN are now realized. Bandwidth consumption is kept to a minimum by preventing cross VLAN broadcast traffic, but hosts in different VLANs are still able to communicate through the use of a router. In this slide, it shows the difference between a static and dynamic VLANs. A static VLANs require an administrator 
to assign individual ports on the network switch to a virtual network no matter what device plus into that port it becomes a member of that page same pre-assigned virtual network however dynamic vlan configuration allows an administrator to define network membership according to the characteristics of the device themselves rather than the switch port location for example a dynamic vlan can be defined with a list of physical address or mac address on network account names how can one set up vlans to any network before setting up vlans the best practice is to plan the entire network's physical and logical setup known as network topology carefully VLAN configuration mistakes can cause serious connectivity and security problems on your network. If you do not have experience setting up computer networks, consider hiring an IT or network professional. As you can see in the slides, here are the various steps where one can set up a VLAN. First, one can choose a valid VLAN number. Then, choose a private IP address range for devices on that VLAN to use. Next, configure the switch devices with either static or dynamic settings. Static configurations require the administrator to assign a VLAN number to each switch port, while dynamic configuration requires assigning a list of MAC addresses or usernames to a VLAN number. Then finally, configure routing between VLANs as needed. Configure two or more VLANs to communicate with each other, as requires the use of either a VLAN or a router. Finally, in this very last slide, let us talk about the benefits of VLAN. First of all, let us try to understand why do we need a VLAN, a VLAN or what are some of the requirements of VLAN that makes it so advantageous when com compared to a normal local area network. There are a couple of basic items that one needs to set up a VLAN or multiple VLANs. As stated before, there are a number of different standards also that one has to know. One including the universal standard, which is IEEE 802.1Q. There is one important interesting point that I'd like to add is that technically you don't need a router to set up a VLAN, but if you want multiple VLANs to interact, you're going to need a router. So talking of the advantages or the benefits of VLAN, VLANs mainly provide a number of advantages such as ease of administration, confinement of broadcast domains, reduced broadcast traffic, and enforcement of security policies. VLANs also provide the following advantages as shown in the slides. Only these few words. Thank you.